first. Um, what we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about uh, is uh, what is Liquid Base. Uh, the one thing we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about Octavus Deploy. We've got two really great uh, demos today um, where we're going to be taking a uh, Postgres SQL database um, from commit all the way through to production. And then we've got a second demo today where we're deploying MongoDB with Octopus and Liquibase. And then, like I said earlier on, uh, we've got a Q&A uh, that will roughly be about 10 minutes. Um, so stick them into Zoom and I'll definitely get the, the questions. So today I'm joined by Senior Solutions Architect from Liquibase, Mr. Mike Olivas. Hey, Mike, how are you today? Hi, Derek. Nice to be here. I got my afternoon coffee, so I'm ready, rearing to go. Uh, glad to be here and willing to talk to folks. Excellent. I definitely passed my time for coffee. Um, I, I may uh, get some slippers after this one. Uh, and then we're also <laughs> joined by Social Architect and one of my colleagues, Mr. Sean Cessna. Hey, Sean, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I've uh, got my own source of caffeine going. It's a nice day outside, so I'm uh, ready, rearing to go. Everybody's winning. Caffeine and sunshine. What more can you ask for? Well, I know what you can ask for. A webinar on database DevOps. So uh, on that front, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about what is Liquibase. So Mike, over to you. Thanks, Derek. So a little bit about what is Liquibase. Liquibase is a database automa release automation tool that helps you automate your database schemas as code at full speed, helping you to continuously deliver with confidence, bringing data DevOps to your database. How do we do that? So we take your database changes and the, that's all the way from your ideation, I need a change in my uh, application all the way into production at a much faster time frame with guardrails uh, around your changes. We do that just you know more than one person. So we help you work faster as a team to collaborate effectively using CI CD tools, just like Octopus and Liquibase, like we're talking about today. And then lastly, we use our database driven innovation to help you deploy those changes at scale. So build once, deploy many uh, to your database changes. Now that we've talked a little bit about what is Liquibase, let's talk a little bit about how it works. So in terms of how Liquibase works, there's two key concepts that we wanna talk about today in terms of understanding just the basics. There are change sets and change logs. Chain sets are basically just atomic changes to your database, whether those are SQL statements, whether those are XML formatted, whether those are YAML format or JSON formatted, Liquibase doesn't care. We're gonna take your atomic changes and we're gonna put those in a change log. And that change log has the order of the changes that you're gonna make. Uh, for instance, here we see eight changes. There are two new ones. Um, this is executing in the order that uh, those changes need to be ordered. Sometimes when you're doing your database changes, you'll submit your changes, but then you also have to tell somebody which order to do those. We have those all packaged together. Now that you have those all packaged together, you'll put those in a source code repository, whether that's a Git-based system, subversion-based system, or TFS-based system. Now that you've done that, you've checked them in, now we're gonna take our Octopus Deploy engine with Liquibase and deploy those to the different databases. Here you see three different databases, whether that's DB1, DB2, DB3, or whether that's a dev database, a test database, and a production database. Liquibase doesn't care. It just needs to know how to get to them. And again, we have a tracking mechanism on those databases. So for instance, on that first one, we've already deployed those two changes to that database. So it's a no operation to that database. But those other two, DB2 and DB3, if those changes are eligible for that particular environment, Liquibase will go ahead and apply them to the database. Now that you kind of understand how Liquibase works, I'll hand it back over to Sean to talk a little bit about Octopus Deploy. Thanks, Mike. Um, Octopus Deploy is an automated deployment tool to where we, uh, we focus on the CD portion of a CI CD pipeline. Within our product, you define the process that you would like to use to have how your deployment works. And then it uses that same process as it goes from environment to environment. And not only that, it also uses the same bits. So what's been deployed to dev gets deployed to prod in the exact same fashion. So you get a repeatable, reliable, and consistent deployment experience. Um, the product is written API first, and what that means is anything that you can do in the UI, you can do with an API call. 
This is advantageous, so if there's any routine tasks within Octopus Deploy that you like to automate, you could just write a PowerShell script or something like that and call the API and call it good. Uh, Octopus Deploy does come in two different flavors. We have cloud and on-premises. Both of these additions have a free starter addition to it, so, which is free up to 10 deployment targets. So if you want to do a POC or just kind of get your feet wet, just playing with it, you can download it, install it, or just use it on our cloud with no credit card required. It's absolutely free. Um, now, I believe uh, Mr. Olivas was going to uh, give us a demonstration of the, the, the Postgres part. So uh, over to you, Mike. Thanks, John. So here, just kind of setting up what we're actually going to see. So here I have downloaded or I did a git clone of the uh, database part of the process. And so as part of that, um, I want to make sure that, you know, I am uh, starting from the latest and greatest. So I want to see uh, what it is, what my status is. I'm using Liquibase. Here's where I've downloaded everything and I'm going to go ahead and, and check out what I've done. Uh, as part of this, because I could have been on vacation or coming back from, uh, you know, lunch or whatever, there may have been some changes that happened. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I've downloaded, I want to go ahead and just run my update here as part of this process. So I've downloaded, I cloned it, and then I want to make sure that everything works as you know in my environment, so that I can share that and share those changes uh, with the with the world. As you can kind of see as this runs, we have an XML based change set, whether that's XML or YAML based or JSON based. Um, in this particular case, we just have an XML format. And I'm going to add, I've been tasked to add some additional information into this Postgres database. Uh, that in additional information is we're gonna add a contractor's table. The, this is just the sample DVD rental uh, sample database so that we actually have information in our database so that you can actually see as part of this update. So as soon as this finishes here, my system's running a little bit slow today. Um, there we go. We finished and we can kind of go see and just refresh over here, make sure all my changes are there. Yep, there's all the changes. I need to add a contractor's table to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a copy. Here I've already done all that I need to do to make my updates. I'm going to go ahead and add that in to the change log, copy that in, we'll save that. And then I'll just run my Liquibase update here again to add that. Make sure that it actually works. Make sure that what I'm adding into the system, make sure that what I'm sharing with you know, my coworkers and other folks as part of this development organization, that works before I share it. Now that I've done it, there it is locally. Let's go ahead and take a look and see my database here. I'll just do another refresh. And there's my contractor's table. Great, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. So now I can go ahead and share it. Let's go ahead and get add, my, my change, get commit, added my contractor table. I do my get push. What this is gonna do now is because we're using an automated system, this is gonna package up uh, those changes as part of my our Git process, Git flow process, and then now we'll, we're ready to actually start to deploy those into the other environments with Octopus Deploy. Back over to you, Sean, uh, to show the next portion of our demo. All right, thanks, Mike. So as he explained, uh, he checked that in, the CI uh, build kicked off, and it has you know one of our um, plugins that's gonna push those packages to Octopus Deploy. Or, or a third party uh, package repository if you have it. But in this case, we pushed it to this Octopus Deploy instance. So if you've never seen Octopus Deploy before, this is the dashboard that you get when you come into the product. As you can see, I've already created the DVD rental project. So we'll go ahead and go inside here and then we'll define our process for deployment. Uh, one thing I did want to mention real quick is uh, prior to the webinar, I did go ahead and enter in all of the variables that we're going to be used. Um, this isn't one of the 101s, so it's it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to waste some time watching me type in values. So 
So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the database exists on our Postgres database server. So I'm going to click on Add Step. And I'm going to filter by Creates. I've got a sec to do the filtering. Uh, should probably do Create Database instead of just that. There we go. There's our Create Postgres database if not exists. I'll go ahead and add that. Uh, we're going to run this on a worker. There's really no need to install the tentacle agent on the uh, database server itself. It's just a connection. So I'm going to choose this uh, specialized pool that I have to run this. And I'm going to start filling in some of these here. So this is going to be the, the fully qualified name of the server. And a user account that has access to create databases. As well as the password associated with that. And uh, tell it what database name or what database to create. Uh, it's a project one. And we're just going to use the default port, and that's all we needed to do. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to add the Liquibase step to our deployment process. So I'll filter by Liquibase. And here we have one called Liquibase Apply Change Set. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to ours. I'm going to change the name of this to gather changes and I'll explain that in just a few moments. And uh, once again, we're going to run on a worker uh, on the same pool that we used before. This particular uh, package does use some Liquibase Pro features. So the uh, step template has the ability to enter your Pro key. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, the database type is going to be Postgres and I need to tell it what the changelog file is. So uh, in this case, uh, we're using an XML file. Mike, if I remember correctly, it supports more than just XML, right? That is correct. So uh, whether you want to use XML, JSON-based, YAML-based, or even just the straight SQL uh, formats uh, to make their changes, we support all four of those. Oh, that's really, really flexible. That's pretty cool. Just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this stuff real quick. Database name. Again, this uh, Postgres user. So while he's filling that in that information, I just wanted to kind of note that we just touched on a very small piece of Liquibase and the capabilities of it. So all you saw me was just to validate I can make some changes. As far as best practices and some other things to do, you know, we'll talk about those in a little bit while he fills those up. All right, yeah, that's actually a really good segue to this uh, section here where it says report only. Uh, when you click on this checkbox, what it's gonna do is it's going to generate the SQL statements that it's gonna use to execute against the server. And then it's gonna save that as an artifact to Octopus Deploy so it can be uh, downloaded and reviewed if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and check on that. Um, and then one of the other uh, attributes of the step template itself is if you didn't include the Liquibase product, uh, product in your package, it gives you the ability to just go ahead and download it at deploy time. And it will go ahead and download uh, Liquibase product, Java, and whatever, and the, the specific database driver that's associated with your database type selection. If for ever, whatever reason you needed to, you could specify a Liquibase version here. If you didn't want to use the latest and greatest, you can specify one that you know works um, for your needs. But in this case, latest and greatest is going to be perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to choose my DVD rental application. And this step is done. So now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to clone this step. And since this, the, the one that we just filled out only does gather the changes, I'm going to call this one for apply. And the only difference between these two steps is going to be that checkbox for report only. Okay, we're going to add one more step to our process. And this is going to be the manual intervention step. And the reason I'm going to add this is uh, there are some organizations who, as part of the deployment process, Say for instance, the DBA team likes to review the script before allowing it to go to production. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna give the instructions of review and approve. 
And I'm going to tell it that the responsible team for this is going to be the DBA team. And only the DBA team is allowed to approve this. Uh, so for the lower level environments, it doesn't really make much sense. This really only needs to run in production. So I'm going to tell it I only want to run this particular step in production. Now, uh, as part of this webinar, Mike and I had a discussion as to, you know, when these types of approvals could slash should be done. And Mike had had another approach that was really an awesome approach as well. Yep. So as part of, if that's how we do things today, you know, we review those scripts, your DBAs or whoever it is that's reviewing those scripts before production deployments. We'd also like to, you can do that as he's showing here today, but you'd also potentially start to shift left. So how you shift left is as part of that PR process. So when I check that in, we may have a data architect or DBA review it at that point. This way, it's much earlier in the process where you're reviewing that. And then we also have some capabilities in terms of the paid products to kind of even automate that process. But as part of the PR process, now you're reviewing the scripts and now you're validating before they even get into your pipelines, um, those are being reviewed and done uh, at that point. In addition to it, you know, it's, as you go through that pipeline, if you continue to want to review them as part of uh, your production deployment, you can do that too. So we're flexible in terms of how we can do those review process, whether it's early on, later on, both uh, Liquibase and Octopus Deploy can kind of manage that. Yeah, and a part of that DevOps philosophy is you really want to catch things as early as possible. So Mike's suggestion of, of uh, involving a DBA team in that PR process uh, would be probably the best recommended approach, but we do understand that some people are at different levels of DevOps. So again, to echo what Mike was saying, that there are multiple approaches you can take to this. So this is just kind of showing off the manual intervention step inside of Octopus Deploy as, as part of that. So um, as we were talking, I went ahead and reordered the steps so that the uh, manual intervention does occur before the apply, because it would be silly if I didn't. Um, so now our process is done. So we can go ahead and click save here. And now we can create a release. Save that. And we're gonna deploy this to the test environment. Okay, so the first thing uh, we told it to do was to go ahead and take a look to see if that database exists. So this does so, it's gonna import the SQL module, simply SQL, and now it's going through the creation process of that database. All right, DVD, that was successful. The next part of the process is it's going to get that package that we created and send that over to the worker to do some work. And as you can see here, I'm expanding these different things so we can see roughly in real time exactly what's going on. Um, as you can see, it's already went out and found the latest version of Liquibase, uh, downloaded it and extracted it. Uh, now it's going through the process of downloading and extracting Java so that we have, this is just in case that Java wasn't on the worker already, this doubly makes sure that it's going to work. Uh, next part of the process is going to be going out and finding that Postgres driver so that we have the appropriate driver for when we execute. And which went ahead and uh, ran that update SQL statement, which is just one of the commands that uh, Liquibase is capable of. Uh, if we pop back over to the task summary, we can see that it's already went ahead and attached that change, uh, the, the SQL that it's going to do directly to Octopus itself. So we can just you know click on that, and it should download. There it goes. Coming over here, we can see that it's uh, gone through those processes already and it's it's went ahead and updated our database. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, kick this off to production so we can get some of those uh, steps going as I bring up PG Admin to show you that it did indeed create our database. So I'm gonna bring uh, PG Admin over here and connect to our, our server. And as you can see, it's actually already created our production data database as well. 
go and expand this guy here and go to the tables we can see that the liquid based product has gone in and created our schema from a completely empty database which is really awesome and above that it's actually populated the database with some data as well So there we go, and that was part of the that was part of the change sets that you included. Was that is that correct, Mike? That's correct. So whether Liquibase can handle your DDL scripts, so the schemas and information around it can handle the stored logic, if that's all part of your database process, and it can also handle DML, so your data markup language, to be able to populate the information in your database. So the the three major functions of database changes and updates, Liquibase can handle those. That's a really flexible tool. That's really awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back out of the way. Ah, there we go. Uh, it's gone through the process. We can see that it's already paused our, our, our deployment in the, in the point where it's going to say, somebody needs to approve me. So at this point, if you, uh, if you had that other methodology of reviewing the script before it goes to production, this gives your DBA the ability to go ahead and download, take a look to make sure there's nothing nefarious and then say, yep, and assign this task to me. To me. Say, looks good to me. And then just go ahead and tell it to proceed. So what that did, did in the background for Octopus Deploy is it went ahead and paused that deployment, took it out of the queue so that it didn't uh, take up one of the task cap queue or uh, tasks as it was executing. All right, so it's getting to this step, and if we bring, since it hasn't executed anything, we can show you. Schemas. Come on. Should be no tables in here yet. Oh, looks like it's already actually done it. I wasn't quick enough. Yep, it's doing its thing. And there we are, a successful deployment. We actually have data in here as well. Awesome. So as uh, Derek mentioned uh, before, we, we just went ahead and did a Postgres database update from commit all the way to production. And we we're also gonna do a deployment against MongoDB. Uh, Oct or not Octopus Deploy, I'm sorry. The, the liquid based product um, doesn't exist solely in the space of transactional databases. It actually works against NoSQL databases as well. So I have this MongoDB project I'm going to show you. I'm going to click on Define Our Process. And this one is going to be a little bit different in that first we had to create that database so that we had something to deploy against. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how MongoDB works, it will actually create things on the fly for you as it sees them. I'm going to click add step here. And the same as before, we're just going to run this on a worker and choose uh, our, our worker pool here. This particular one doesn't have any uh, pro key features, so I don't need to use it. Uh, so I'm going to skip that step. I'm going to choose MongoDB here. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out is this is the list of databases, database types that the step template is capable of working against. This is not a comprehensive list of what Liquibase itself uh, can work against. I think Mike can speak to that a little bit better. Yep. So whether it's a relational database uh, like a MaxDB or Vertica, Firebird, or even CockroachDB, or whether we're talking about a NoSQL database, for instance, as we're showing here, Mongo, or whether that's a Cassandra or Cosmos-based database, we're adding continually adding uh, databases to our library of databases that you can deploy to. We're track, we're making sure that we can just track, version, and deploy those date those to those databases, whether it's SQL type scripts or whether they're collection type NoSQL type scripts. That's really cool. I don't, and I personally don't know of another tool that can handle both. We, we basically, you know, again, too, 
uh, something I failed to point out is we don't care whether those databases are in the cloud, cloud-based databases or uh, on-premises databases. For instance, we talk about Mongo or Mongo Atlas, Atlas being the cloud-based one. As long as Liquibase and Octopus can talk to that database, we're able to deploy it. And also the way we've designed it, you know, people are coming up with new databases all the time. Just the way we've designed Liquibase, probably two thirds to three quarters of what you do with that database could probably be handled out of the box. We do have a test harness that allows you to be able to see what works, what doesn't work very quickly. And then because those databases are being added, they have some uh, added feature functionality. We have the ability to add the SQL directly itself to that uh, system so that we, you can use you know the other potential quarter until we get to you know uh, actually supporting the database directly that's really cool uh one thing i wanted to mention as i was filling this out is this this connection query string parameters for mongodb it does require uh you to tell it where the ad the authentication database is so that's why i've added auth source equals admin here. That, that's what it is by default, but you know whatever whatever database that you uh, want it to use, you can put here. Um, one thing to uh, be aware of is when dealing with NoSQL, since it's obviously NoSQL, the report only feature of the template isn't gonna work. It will fail because it doesn't, it doesn't know how to do it since it's a NoSQL thing. Uh, but just like before, I'm gonna tell it to download Liquibase and in this case, I'm going to choose my other package here and click Save. Now, for this demonstration, this is going to be our only step that we need. Um, if you were deploying like a full stack application, you would have other steps in here that can handle the web code or whatever type of code you're using. But for this demonstration, we're just going to be deploying to MongoDB. So this is all that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Release here and click Save. and deploy to test and deploy. And I'm going to bring up Compass while this is executing. And as you can see, these are all the databases that currently exist. So we're going to let that acquire package uh, function in the background. Let's go back to this real quick, see what's going on. Looks like uh, you know the demo gods are, are are not looking favorably. It's just taking a little bit longer than normal. I'm sure, Mike, you've encountered these types of things your entire life as well. Yep, that that is uh, correct. So at least we know that this is live, not pre, kind of pre-canned. You are actually doing, uh, a, you know, for the folks here, you can actually see this is happening live as is versus something that's just kind of pre-canned. So. Um, while, it, while we're waiting for this, I just wanted to talk about possibly some additional kind of capabilities of Liquibase itself. Uh, so we just kind of quickly show just a couple of the commands that you might do as part of your updates. But whether those uh, other changes or other best practices that you're doing, whether those are doing uh, diff kind of capabilities to make sure that you're not uh, drifting from uh, the changes in your pipeline. So as you go up in the chain in your pipeline, and we're looking at, um, you know, dev, test, prod, uh, there's more and more information in each of the databases. And so there may be somebody who is going directly onto those systems. Uh, with the capabilities of some of the paid products, we're able to detect that um, and, you know, make sure that our updates, um, make sure that we're not seeing any drift as part of those those particular set of uh, databases as we're doing our changes. As Mike was talking, uh, you saw with live demos, we had a failure. And the failure was I put in the server name instead of the MongoDB username. So I'm going to uh, fix that real quick. There we go. It should be much happier now. All right, so let me create a new release. Sorry about this, people. That was a silly mistake on my part. The nice part about this is because we have this configured as code, we're able to make these changes here in the configuration side of things and be able to redeploy. 
yes, it, it does make things yeah, easy, easy to recover from silly mistakes. <laughs> so as just like before, it's went out and grabbed liquid base. It's, it's downloading Java. It's going to go out and get the, the MongoDB driver that it needs. And now it's actually running liquid base and the update is successful this time. All right. So if we refresh here, we can see that our best bags database has been created. We have a couple of collections with some data in it. And you know, one thing that I noticed uh, we didn't quite cover is these two extra tables here, this database log. And I think that says lock, right? Can you, can you uh, kind of explain what those are? Sure. So we have two tables that we're adding or two collections, depending on the type of database we're talking to. One of those is the database change log table. And that's basically keeping track of what we have deployed and what we have not deployed to the system. Back to that uh, presentation where we talked about the no operation or no op uh, to one database and then the uh, other changes to the other databases. So that keeps track and makes sure that you uh, deploy what's needed what's and you're only deploying, even if you deploy a second time to that same database, it's basically gonna look at the database and say, I've already done this, there's nothing for me to do. The second table there is the changelog lock table. So we're protecting you so that only one system, one part of Liquibase is updating at a time. This way, as you make changes or as you try and do deploy, build once, deploy many, we're protecting you from yourself in terms of being able to only deploy uh, or making sure that only one, one thing is updating the database at a time. Yeah, and that's really one of the the, the, the key philo philosophical features that both Liquibase and Octopus Deploy share is that build once, deploy many uh, idea. That's really something that we promote in, in, in our organization. Uh, all right, so uh, correct me, did we go ahead and go over the differences between Community Pro and Enterprise already? Did we already cover that? We have not. So we talked a little bit at a high level, but so as with Liquibase, there is the community version that you can go download. Uh, but the paid for kind of capabilities that uh, just to give you a little taste of those things, I talked a little bit about Drift, um, the ability to do snapshots and make sure that um, you have the uh, update. So after a deployment back to those best practices, you want to make sure uh, that you keep a, a copy of what was actually changed and updated so you can compare to those, whether those are offline compares um, or online compares as part of uh, your change against that snapshot. Other capabilities are uh, the guardrails and rules capability. So for instance, we talked about that PR process about reviewing those changes as they come in. Maybe you want to use the rules engine as part of that process to validate those changes so you're not inundating the, the DBAs with all the uh, with all the changes, and you're able to automate those review process as part of that. We have something called Forecast uh, in our enterprise product, and that's a patented product or patented component that allows you to do uh, a dry run. I call it actually a dry run on steroids uh, because it's able to validate that what you're actually going to do uh, will work before you actually do it. So a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach. Proactive meaning you want to make sure that it's actually going to work as opposed to a reactive, you you actually deploy it and then you got to do a rollback as part of that. So it alleviates that rollback uh, mechanism or requirement as part of that. And then lastly, they'd be able to track what's actually been deployed in a UI fashion. So um, knowing what's actually deployed without having to actually go to the database itself and see, okay, let's go take a look at the tracking table and see what's up. We actually have a UI to be able to show that at a more program or project level. A real quick question, something that actually didn't dawn on me until right now. Uh, so with, with uh, these two deployments that we did, um, you saw me, I didn't enter a pro key here. So this obviously used the community edition. And if we go back to uh, the DVD rental deployment real quick, uh, let me you know, click on this guy right here. We can see that oh, it's using pro. Now you mentioned enterprise. Is that, that even more different than the two that I showed? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so that, that has the, the rules, the uh, forecast capability, and that UI. Um, something that I failed to mention that we, that uh, as part of this was, and I think we're showing that here is, uh, let's say we had an update here as part of our pro deployment, and maybe there was a bad trigger. So that trigger was already done as part of our previous deployment, and we added our contractors table. With the community version, or with you know typical rollback, in order to be able to uh, get to that trigger, you're going to have to undo, 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 and we don't want to lose the contractors feature that we just added, all the capabilities on top of that, and so we just want to be able to remove that trigger uh, without having to go back because it's a mutually exclusive change. With Pro, we have something called what you may know as a get cherry pick, so being able to do a a targeted rollback of that one particular trigger and be able to remove that out of our system. So this bad trigger can be removed uh, and without having to lose all the capabilities of everything that you have, uh, you know, the new features you have deployed. That's a really powerful feature. Um, a lot of the questions that we'll get with Octopus Deploy is, you know, at least some of them is, how do we perform rollbacks? Uh, the Octopus product itself um, with, with web code is easy with database stuff, it gets a little bit more complex. Um, we've always strove to try to say, you know, try not to roll back when possible and roll forward, fix it, what's going on. Is that also what you recommend to your customers? Oh, definitely. So yes, when they say, you know, can you do a rollback? The short answer is yes. Do you want to do a rollback? Well, as part of the process, we'd rather you do a roll forward uh, because we're using a migration based strategy. You can do that roll forward capability. So if, without losing all the things that you've done, without losing all the data and having to do a restore, it typically takes just as much time to do a rollback than it does to actually do a roll forward because you're trying to figure out what went wrong. And in the time that it takes you to do that, what went wrong and, and, and figure out how do you get it out of the system, you can actually do the fix forward strategy and just add that new change, even if it is the old change you just reapplying the old change over the top, and that's more of a fixed forward strategy to begin with. Even uh, things like, you know, as part of that, you typically don't want to do this test in production. Yeah, you did your production deployment, but now you're actually testing the fix in production. You typically want to do a test of that fix in some pre-prod environment, and, and there may be, as part of your normal process, you have to actually test it. There may be some processes that you have it has to have been deployed somewhere else before it's deployed to production. Again, that's a fixed forward strategy versus a rollback strategy. Awesome. That, that's a pretty powerful feature, though. That's uh, That really shows how these two products can work in conjunction very well. Um, I believe that actually uh, shores up the demonstrations that we had prepared. Uh, do we have any questions, Derek? Hey, Sean. Yes, we do. Uh, really great. I just want to say thank you so much for the presentation. That was really great. Um, we've got a few questions, actually. Um, we've got a question from Bradley. Bradley is asking, um, his project's test environment typically uh, likes to uh, always have a database restored from backup. And then what they do is they then update it with the new database scripts. Is that something that Liquidbase does? And if not, is it a better approach uh, that Bradley can use? Uh, yeah, so definitely if, if that's how you do things. So basically, as long as that tracking table is part of the, the rollback, as part of that restore uh, process, it's fine. Uh, Liquidbase can actually handle that. So uh, we actually work with other test data management systems um, to kind of help with the, the, that type of update. So yes, we can handle that as well. Excellent. Uh, the next one's from Michael. Michael is asking, uh, can you run things in parallel if you you would choose to? And he says that's both to Liquibase and Octopus Deploy. I'll go ahead and let Mike answer that first for his. Okay. So yes, as part of that, uh, those two uh, tracking systems that we have, so there's the database change log lock table and the change of it database change log table. That log table is making sure that no two Liquibase processes are updating the database at the same time. And so there's a mechanism to make sure that as you're doing those parallel deployments, uh, will keep you from uh, overwriting or doing it at the same time. Only one process is able to get in and make the updates to the database at that time. 
Cool. Uh, with the with the Octopus Deploy product, uh, you do have the capability of telling steps to run in parallel instead of sequential. And that's going to be down here in the start one. You can actually just tell it run in parallel with the previous step. Excellent. Okay, so uh, next question is um, from David. David is asking, I've used Liquibase for years and uh, see that you now have a Liquibase hub. Can you share a bit on what registering for that as a community user uh, might do for them? Oh, definitely. Yeah, so as part of that uh, Liquibase hub, so we talked a little bit about the UI of making sure that you understand what changes are actually um, you can do. So uh, you can have better visibility into all those changes. Uh, but you can see what's actually been updated. You can actually debug, uh, uh, you know, and see what, share with the team what those changes were and the possibility of leveraging future features that we are planning on putting in our uh, product. So better visibility, you can collaborate, you can, uh, and we're also uh, planning on adding additional features and functions, uh, for instance, kind of the rules capability uh, to be able to do that uh, instead of just strictly through the command line tool. Excellent. Um, um, Rachel is asking about uh, manual interventions. Um, she was wondering um, if there's a way using manual interventions, uh, Sean, um, to have automatic approvals for anything that isn't DDL. So say, for instance, you push forward a, a DML, uh, which is a data manipulation language change. Um, they want their DBEAs to basically just automatic, just flow through without approval. But once you're um, defining it, um, they want to have full approval. Is that something that Octopus can do? It can. Uh, you could define uh, uh, some type of process that examines the SQL that's going to be run to look for specific statements. And then if it doesn't find anything, you can have it out use the output variable feature of Octopus Deploy to set whether auto approval is true or false. And while you know, I'm on the manual intervention step here, you can actually tell it to have a run condition and you know, use a variable. You know, if it's, if it's true, then you know, make the manual intervention go. If not, just go ahead and skip it. Awesome, that's really cool. So you can basically just um, bypass the approval if required, if you meet specific, uh, specific requirements. Um, this is um, for both of you. Um, and unfortunately, this is going to be the last couple of questions. And th this one is for, um, for Mike. What's coming up? What's cool? What's share me some cool stuff that's coming up uh, from Liquibase on your roadmap? Yeah, so uh, a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, one of those is just adding additional database support. So whether those are uh, NoSQL type databases or relational databases, uh, as I mentioned, we're looking at adding uh, rule capability into our hub. Um, so being able to put guardrails and standards as part of your updates uh, into uh, Liquibase so that uh, you're able to better manage those changes uh, as part of your uh, database updates. Those are kind of two key things that I think that, you know, on our roadmap to, to help. Do you have a public roadmap by any chance, Mike, that you can share with uh, people? Um, I will get with the team and share that public roadmap. I, I'll find where that is. Yeah, that's no problem. So, what I'll do as now. Far as yeah. Oh, sorry. In you as, go. Far, as far as Octopus Deploy goes, we do have a public roadmap on our website. It shows all the different uh, features that we're currently working on, as well as you know where they are in process. Uh, that's if you go to our website, scroll down to the bottom. There's a roadmap link, um, and then just kind of shows exactly what we've got going on. We've got. Uh, an import export between spaces uh, we call Project Bento. That's on its way down to the hill. It's hopefully going to be released soon. Our configus code feature is is still a work in progress. We're still trying to work that done. We're uh, we're dog fooding it ourselves to make sure it's uh, ready for the public. Uh, we're making enhancements to the GitHub Actions and uh, working on Team City Agents builds, as well as uh, gearing up for Enterprise Cloud. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. 
And I just want to take a, a just a quick moment just to say thank you so much to both of you. Uh, I really enjoyed that uh, webinar. Even I learned some something. And I, this is the, like, the fifth time you've done it together as well. Um, so I'm just going to extend that thanks as well uh, to everyone on the webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time to come along and uh, listen to myself, Sean and Mike. Um, a recording of the uh, webinar will be emailed to you. That will likely be early next week. Um, there's an upcoming event. Um, there's some upcoming events um, on May 19th, 20th and 24th. Um, we're going to be talking accelerating your Azure DevOps pipeline and Azure Platform as a Service with Octopus Deploy. Uh, that's with Gregor Suti and myself. Um, and then uh, I'm back with Adam Close on June 2nd, 3rd and 7th. Uh, um, to talk about all the new cool stuff in 2021.1. Um, unfortunately, it won't be config as code, but you may want to check out Project Bento or Project Import and Export. Uh, just want to say, Sean and Mike again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Excellent. Everyone have a good day. Bye. Bye.